All right, in this uh, video, I want to show you how to download the Microsoft Automated Installation Kit for Windows 7. We're going to utilize the instructions in that kit to create a Windows PE ISO, which will then save out on the ESX server so we can build a virtual machine. All right, so the first thing you need to do is download the uh, ISO, or you have to download the installation kit, and to do that, I have the link in the handout, which will take you right to the download window. So this is 64-bit uh, for Windows 7. Just download that to your local machine. Once it's copied to your local machine and pay attention to where you downloaded it, uh, then you'll need to double click on it to install it and it takes several minutes for it to install. Once you have it installed, we want to go to Start in All Programs and then the Microsoft Windows AIK documentation and click on the step-by-step -step basic Windows deployment for IT pros because you're an IT pro now. All right, these are the instructions. We want to skip down to step three, creating a bootable Windows media. These are the instructions we're going to basically follow. They're very similar to the instructions in the handout all right, so we've downloaded the installation kit. We're now going to read through step three of the documentation. And then we're going to uh, execute these commands. <clears throat> now, in the handout, you'll see that this special symbol equals a blank space. Uh, sometimes when you print these uh, handouts out or just reading them, it's hard to tell if there's a space or if there's just the kerneling between the letters. So like right here, there is no space between these symbols, but there should be a space between the command PE.CMD blank space, AMD64 blank space, C colon backslash your last name. So let's try that out and see what we come up with. Move that out of the way. Here's a little more thorough uh, explanations, very similar to what we had. <clears throat> So, first thing we need to use is the uh, command line, but you don't just use the regular command line. You need to use the deployment tools command prompt. So, you want to right click on that and run it as administrator. Now, depending on what machine you're on, you're going to need to know the administrator username and password. So, for the machines in our classroom here, if you're remoting into the classroom, the administrator is going to be RL153 dash and then the number of the machine you're on. So depending on which machine in the classroom here you've remoted into, you'll need to know that. So when you remote into a machine, go look at the computer's name. It'll be RL153 dash something, 01, 09, 15. That'll be the part of the administrator's name. So you have to put in RL153 dash, the number of the machine you're sitting at, backslash labman, and then use our standard password, and that will authenticate your use of this deployment tools command prompt. All right, so you see that it starts out and automatically changes the path, and you're in these PE tools folder. So the first command says to type copy PE, dot cmd space amd64 space c colon backslash your last name so the c colon backslash is going to tell it I want to make this folder in the c drive create a new folder called your last name in case this one for me and we want to use the amd64 bit tools all right, so let's execute that. <clears throat> and you'll see it copies everything you need, and we're done. And it also changes the prompt is now in the folder that it just created. I'm going to clear the screen here. All right, the next command is to copy winpe.wim space to the c colon backslash your last name backslash ISO 
backslash sources backslash boot dot wim. So this command is telling the computer to copy the file and since we didn't preface where the file is it will assume and it will only look for this file in this location. Now let's see if it's there. So if you open up the Windows Explorer, we go to the C drive, we go to Miller, and sure enough, there is the file, winpe.wim. There's the ISO folder it's going to move it into, and in there is the sources folder. And if we look, there's nothing in there right now. So this command is going to copy this file to a new location and rename it boot.wim if it works. Let's see if it works. Oh joy. All right, so we've done that. Now let's uh, look at the last command which will actually convert this into an ISO that we can use with ESX. So the command is OSCDIMG space option N space option H space option B and then without a space you immediately put in the path that you want to execute. So C colon backslash your last name backslash etfsboot.com space ISO folder space your last name P E 64 dot ISO. So this is going to tell the operating system use this command with these options on this location on this ETFS boot.com execute all of that against this folder ISO and when you're done make a new file called Miller PE 64 dot ISO or in your case, it'll be your last name, PE64.ISO. Let's see if it really works. Oh, yay. Working right along. It's writing 21 files, 9 directories, and it's done. And if your file image isn't around 167 megs, something didn't work. But that's about right. So let's take a look at this now. If I do a directory listing, I'm going to clear the screen first. If I do a DIR there is my new ISO file MillerPE.ISO 167 meg that looks about right you'll notice it's bigger than the winpe.wim that it was made from and that's because it put in some extra drivers and some extra tools that will allow you to use this with a VM environment alright let's uh, close out of the command prompt Remember where it's at now. C colon Miller is where these files are. Close out of that. Let's go and open up our virtual machine. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to make a whole new virtual machine. Pull this over here. All right, so I'm going to make it in the IT Essentials resource pool. I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Use typical. We'll call it Miller PE. And let's see, we'll just leave it right up there. Uh, we want to put it on the VM store. And we're going to... Let's see, it won't really matter what we're doing here, but let's go with the Windows 7 64-bit. All right, we're in room 153, so we need to use the VLAN 153 for our network, and we need the thin provision. Okay, and finish. Let that percolate for a second. Here's the WinPE. And let's go right in. Well, it's not quite done yet. There we go. Now edit the settings. 
we want to boot this machine to the ISO we just created. So we want to use a data store ISO. We want to connect it at power on. And we'll go out to the ISO store and look in ISO store. And lo and behold, it's not there. Oh no, it's on our local machine. How do we get it out to the data store? Because ESX can only use files on its data store. So let's go back out here to the ESX server and go to the data store. Now right click on ISO store. Go to browse data store. Highlight the ISO images, double click on it. And let's make a new folder for ourselves. So I'm going to call Miller ISO. Let's go into there. And now let's upload our ISO file. Click upload a file. And we want to go to the C drive, Miller, Miller PE64. Let that percolate. And there it is. Now it's out on the data store. So now it's available for use. Close that back up. Go back to my new WinPE VM. Edit the settings. Select the CD-ROM drive. We want to use an ISO. We want to connect it power line. Don't forget to do this. Oh, you get it all set up and it doesn't boot, doesn't boot. Go to the ISO store. ISO images. Go into your folder and tell it to use your ISO. Click OK. Click OK. Wait for it to get all done. Not quite done. Still waiting. Do -de -do -da -do -do. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to open up a console. Bring this over here. Close this out of the way. Power on. See where the smoke rolls out. Oh, happy, happy, joy, joy. Seems to be working. Don't you just love it when this technology actually works? Yeah, I know. I'm surprised too. Bada bing, bada boom. There you have the pre install environment, the WinPE environment. It's a command line environment, but it also can accommodate certain graphical uh, utilities. So there you go. That's how to make a bootable WinPE ISO so you can boot your new virtual machine to your personalized ISO. All right, give it a try.